Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us on the Sackcloth and Ashes News Report. Friends, just want to start off this evening just giving a little update on the Bible school that we're planning on building in Kisumu, Kenya. We have been using the donations that have been coming in to reconstruct a structure that was used for uh, animals. It was a goat house is a very nice structure, very sturdy, and we have uh, remodeled it and turned it into a kitchen because uh, the students, they have to have something to eat. So we put new floors in, we painted new doors, we put cabinets in, electricity, we even put a stove in there. They're called Jiko stoves. That's very common in Kenya, and it's almost like a a wonderful, it's almost like a rocket stove, the design, very efficient, and it has three burners on it. We, like I said, we put electricity in, and we did several farming projects there with those who live in the village. Now, the main concern from the pastor there who's going to be running the school was for food security. So, we have really been creative trying to do so many different uh, projects there, more than 100 fruit trees have been planted as well as on that property, as well as fruit trees being planted at the residences of many who live in the village. We even a few weeks ago had a, a large seed distribution project for the farmers there. And I, I think everyone in the village who wants a Bible, at least every home has one Bible. So uh, just a wonderful group of people that we're working with there. Exciting work to do for the Lord Jesus. Now, fundraising has been our greatest challenge, but we know that God, he will finish what he has begun. There have been at least 20 people who have expressed an interest to study the Bible there. How awesome. And we even had an outreach project two days ago where cooking oil was distributed to nine different families. So the average pay for people who live in this area is about a dollar a day. So distributing cooking oil and seeds for their gardens is a very big blessing for them. Sometimes they can grow the crops and sell them and actually help take care of some of their bill. So praise the Lord. I was just thinking about the widow at Zarephath, you know. God is on the move, friends. So we just want to say a very sincere thank you to everyone who believes in this project that we're doing, Walking Beside the Poor. Uh, you know, we do these things as though we are doing them unto the Lord and also to fulfill the Great Commission because the stakes are high. Eternity is at stake for these precious souls. So these people are very, very uh, kind and very important to us and very important to the Lord. So just want to give you a little update there. And if you want more information, you can feel free to email me at GwendolynSong at gmail.com. All right, well, friends, what do you do when you find out that the entire political system is a sham? See, the perfect setup for the fall of America, it is underway, and I believe the Lord is allowing it because pride always goes before the fall. That's what uh, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18 says, and the haughtiness of the USA, the unholiness of the USA is at the center of this fall. And it is why we are in a downward spiral. And we cause this ourselves. And we can either get up and start believing in God and in his holy word and obeying it and start treating our neighbors with respect or continue in this free fall that the uh, Biden empire is orchestrating. Now, I used to think that the U.S. government was just this big circus ring followed by one staged mess after another to keep the sheep just chasing their tails. But now I'm more convinced that it is the playing out of a Star Wars movie. The empire strikes back. Darkness is striking back at God and at God's people. And that is more in tune with the Bible's narrative. So it's all about the word of God and those who choose to love the Lord, those who choose to serve him. Two sides, two groups of people.
And darkness is ruling over this nation. And neither side is going to favor God's people, whether Republican or Democrat. Darkness is darkness and light is light. Now, I was just wondering, I thought I would pose this question to you today. Did you ever think to yourself, why do the churches in the USA and abroad have steeples that look like syringes? Look at these images, church after church after church, and it doesn't matter the denomination. They all have this similar look. The church is not a political party. It's supposed to be a dedicated group of people worshiping God in truth and spirit. But the truth is, steeples do resemble syringes. And this could be evidence of the darkness's influence in architecture and the greater plan that was, you know, carried out very slowly over time, you know, right there under humanity's noses. So at the risk of being called crazy, hey, you can't deny the resemblance of a steeple to a syringe. So drive around your town, check out the, the churches in your community, and see if what I'm telling you lines up with what you're seeing. Now, another strange phenomenon, I wanted to run this past you this evening as well, are the political commercials out there asking Americans to chip in. Yes, to help the Democrat or the Republican candidates, like like these guys need more money. Hmm. Now listen to this for a minute. Look at this wordplay. Chip in, chip in. I am very humbly asking if you could chip in five, ten, or even twenty-five dollars. I know that times could be tough, and they are tough under this horrible president that we have, crooked Joe Biden. Donald Trump is trying to hijack this election by repeating lies that have been totally discredited about me, and that we need to make sure he is not the next president of the United States of America. So chip in five to ten dollars to help us make sure that we defeat Donald Trump and stop this outrageous lying and cheating that he engages in. If you've ever voted for my father, I'm asking you to chip in five, ten, or even twenty-five dollars to his campaign today. Crooked Joe Biden has an army of liberal billionaires bankrolling his campaign. But if everyone watching this video chips into my dad's campaign, he'll be able to drown them out once and for all. Please support I've said it before, I will say it again. We can't balance the budget on the backs of the very people who have borne the biggest brunt of this recession. Everyone's going to have to chip in. That's only fair. That's the principle I'll be fighting for during the next phase of this process. Do you think Joe Biden needs more money? Do you think Donald Trump truly needs more money? I mean, this is really masterful wordplay, masterful. But I, I will leave it up to you and what you conclude. But one day, there's going to be a man who stands up, the Antichrist. He's going to stand up in front of the world and say, you must chip in in order to be a part of his global government. You will have to take his chip. Now, just some more food for thought. Now, this was very important news that came out uh, yesterday, and it got buried down into about the fifth place on the headline news. Abortions are on the rise in the U.S. Very, very sad news. And I don't think many of us are surprised, you know, despite more than a dozen statewide bans that have taken effect since the Supreme Court's Dobb decision that revoked the federal right to abortion in June of 2022. There were, listen to this, there were more than one million abortions in the U.S. in 2023, the highest rate in more than a decade, and a 10% jump from 2020. And this is for this is information from the Guttmacher Institute, and they research sexual and reproductive health, and they also support abortion rights, so that's important to know. But their data also suggests that medication abortion is a more common option than ever, and there are currently 14 states with total bans against the procedure, while nearly every other state has seen an increase in the number of abortions provided from 2020 to 2023. That's a very high number of U.S. deaths per abortion, and it actually could be much higher. 
I don't believe, you know, that the tr they really give you the accurate numbers. I believe it's underreported. Now, is it possible that the majority of the migrants coming across the border are more righteous than the Americans? Now, I'm not talking about the ones who are coming in here that are part of organized crime, not referring to them. But I wondered if the uh, Guttmacher Institute interviewed them, and if they did, as they come across the border, what their thoughts are on abortion. You see, while Americans are choosing to end life in the womb, end a baby's life in the womb, the migrants, they may just come here and have a baby boom. You just wait and see. One group's getting depopulated and the other one may overpopulate the U.S. And that would not surprise me one bit. Now, I have two quick videos I want you to take a look at this evening. Please don't stop watching this video now. Let these quick videos stir a passion in you to pray over the unborn and for the leadership of this nation. We do need to be praying for those in leadership. That is what the Bible says. That's what Paul was exhorting Timothy to do. And by the way, that's when Nero was in power. So anyways, the first video is, it's a first for a vice president of the U.S., a personal visit to a woman's clinic in Kamala's own words. She went to this is what she said. She went to the uh, a clinic to uplift the workers. Of course, this is in a healthcare clinic that performs abortions. So listen to the vice president's comments. I'm here at this healthcare clinic to uplift the work that is happening in Minnesota as an example of what true leadership looks like. And please do understand that when we talk about a clinic such as this. It is absolutely about health care and reproductive health care. So everyone get ready for the language, uterus. <laughs> that part of the body needs a lot of medical care from time to time. <laughs> Issues like fibroids, we can handle this. Breast cancer screenings, contraceptive care. That is the kind of work that happens here in addition, of course, to abortion care. Now, moving on to the next video, we have a transgender who said, having an abortion, it was one of the greatest acts of compassion that she ever committed, and one of the best decisions, she said, I ever made. So take a listen to this one and see, at, see the uh, seriousness of how our nation is falling. Hi. Hi, my name is Lucky. I've had an abortion and I get gender affirming care from Planned Parenthood. I wound up in a very, very difficult relationship. And within three months, I found out that I was pregnant. I was like, oh no. My abortion was one of the greatest acts of compassion I had ever committed. It was an easy decision. And it was a decision that for the friends I had told I was trans, they were like, get it. You know, that's fine, like, great. You know, that's your decision. You want to finally begin your life. And it was just one of the best decisions I had ever made, ever in my life. I wish that more people understood that abortion is healthcare, plain and simple. It's important to talk about abortion in a healthcare setting because I think that when we don't, we see abortion as this very, very uncommon, isolated thing, and it's not. It needs to be shared and it needs to be out there, just like any other thing that people go through. I tell my abortion story because people need to understand that it's not just a women's rights issue, it is a people's rights issue. Heartbreaking, isn't it? Heartbreaking what is happening to the younger generation. And this girl who goes by the name of Lucky, uh, she could truly use our prayers. The Lord knows who she is. And uh, will you please add her to your prayer list, friends? Write her name down. You can just write down the name Lucky. And then beside her name, write down a general prayer reminder 
for all those who work in the abortion industry, that God will convict their hearts to turn away from this type of work, the type of work that ends life, and that they will begin to promote life, the life of the unborn, and then eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I really want you to write these two prayer requests down, if you will. We are to pray without ceasing, and many people are not doing that. And what they need is a revelation from God. They need their faith to grow. They need to understand just how powerful our prayers are. And I pray that for each and every one of you, that your faith will grow and that your prayer list will grow and that you would pray in detail over the lives of those Americans and immigrants and migrants who are headed in the wrong direction. All right, friends. Well, that is about it for tonight. I bless all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we'll talk to you again soon.